how did drug, your management. time there end um how did my time end i think it built up yeah and um the final straw mm-hmm. <laughs> the final straw i think uh, i don't know maybe there are two final straws mm-hmm. the first straw was um you know being in a working in a place that has proximity to the president mm. there were some other community dynamics that okay. were very uh, ridiculous okay. maybe is the best word to describe them mm-hmm. so in spite of i i mean i literally felt like i gave everything that i had mm. as a doctor because mm. i told you mm. if my colleague was away it was mm. eight to five mm. maybe then five to eight mm. then maybe midnight mm. to three mm. and then again eight mm. o'clock mm. like non-stop mm. people Barely would literally sleeping. people mm. would come to your house and mm. knock and say my patient has taken a turn for the worst this mm. is them like mm. the the attendants mm. the relatives mm. and then they wake you up and they say my patient is dying and you walk from your house our house was on top of a hill mm. you get to the hospital and you find this person sitting on the bed and then you say okay they told me you're worse what is the problem say i have a headache on this side i feel like headache strobe you woke me up in bed literally because you have a headache that is throbbing when you're sick you know everything is very bad so you yeah, feel bad and your the, people the, feel the very bad the reason why the nurse does not want to come to wake me up is because they know they're not dying yeah <laughs> like you can't be dying and you're sitting in bed conversing and then you say i have a throbbing headache they were so entitled <laughs> to my time and me as the doctor and as i said i did everything i gave everything 110%, like 100 yeah. and i don't know 200% mm-hmm. To this hospital and and i really i was i was really a good doctor i know mm, that mm. and people would come if mm. i was away some patients would come and they would leave mm. they would come oh. and say where's the woman doctor she's not mm. there no, i'll mm. come back and they mm. go mm. so when i would go for like a course mm. after five days and i would come back mm. i would find the opd would be packed mm. out patients would be packed and like half the patients would tell me we came and you know then so we left and so we are back <laughs> so i was like okay and so people would say uh which doctor the, the man or the woman no no the, the woman i was really good i listened i was so patient now this the the straw that broke the camel's back mm-hmm. was one particular incident so uh we are waiting in front of the hospital it was five o'clock in the evening mm-hmm. we were we were waiting for we had a small suzuki to mm-hmm. take us up the hill that's mm-hmm. where we used to stay so we'd wait mm-hmm. then we see flashing lights and uh, sure enough it's uh, an emergency some people had gotten an accident they their car had overturned and so the, there was a man who was injured so they bring him you know into the hospital mm. so we examine him uh, we did have an x-ray mm-hmm. and we examined this guy and we suspect that he had a broken rib mm. because he had blood in the chest cavity mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we didn't have the resources to deal with a punctured lung mm. most likely mm. and the fractured rib mm. So we tell the gentleman, the family, please, we are referring this person to the, the regional referral hospital, which mm. was 100 kilometers mm. from where we were. Mm. So just imagine, it was five o'clock, we're going home, mm. when they, this thing, the emergency came in. So as I've said, most of these people, they didn't have cash. Mm. So even for us to refer him, mm. they needed to first get money to get transport mm-hmm. to take him. Oof, to okay. 100 kilometers away hmm. but what could we do we had the hospital suzuki as i've said hmm. no we actually at that time i think we had a double cabin hmm. so we said we can offer the double cabin but hmm. you have to put in fuel hmm. and all this stuff hmm. so we stabilized the guy put up a drip hmm. you know give him pain medication hmm. we write a very detailed referral hmm. and then we sit and wait hmm. at around 8 p.m now his family had been mobilized they come and they take the guy away. With your double cabin? With our double cabin. Mm. And they take the guy away. Now the next morning, I'm listening to the radio and I hear an announcement that this guy died. And in my mind, the first thing was like, what, that sounds familiar, who is this person? So it was it was a Friday, now this was Saturday. So when I went to the hospital, I asked the nurses, I said, did you hear about this guy? I said, oh, that guy died. I said, what, what happened? So now, they tell the story this guy left instead of going to the national referral hospital there was a small town about 35 kilometers which had a very famous private doctor an obstetrician and gynecologist that was his training but he had set up like this whole hospital mm. where he was doing wonders and miracles mm. um, to these people mm. 
So instead of going to a national fire hospital, they went there. They went there. By the time they got there, the guy had gone home. Mm. So they drove to his house to get him to come and see this emergency. The guy comes, sees the patient and says, no, this one is better to take him to Mbarara, which was the, the regional referral hospital. Dead. Okay. So they've wasted about an hour and a half at this place instead of going to the National Refer Hospital. So they drive to Mbarara town. They don't go to the National Refer Hospital. They go to another private clinic. And this patient actually died while they were being examined at around 2 a.m. They died while they were being examined by another private doctor who was also fetched from his house, drunk, I think. <laughs> and, and, and then now this person dies. Now the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back was not them acknowledging that they made a mistake. Was they said that when they came, we were not there. That we had gone to oh. drink because it was a Friday evening and they had to fetch us from the local bar to come and attend to their patient and we delayed oh. and we didn't provide adequate care. And you can imagine the person got an accident around four and they were only referred at 9 p.m. and the person died in Barara. <laughs> I was like, what? Like, what? Oh my goodness. And I, honestly, I felt like um, this is it. Oh. Three years of my life, I've like literally, literally given everything mm. that I have in me. And mm. this is how I mm. said, no, I'm mm. done. I'm mm. done. Mm. <laughs> done. Mm. <laughs> done with all this. Mm. I was done. Ugh. But Horrible. I said that was like, um, mm. like just one event. Mm. And of course, now it goes all the way to the president. Then before you know it, the, the, the board, the oversight board is, uh, has to someone. is coming to visit and do an investigation about how this patient, how we are negligent. Really? I was like, I so it becomes a big deal. Eh? It became a big deal. It became a big deal. Mm. I, it did go far because we had records. And we said, this is what happened. Yeah. Said, this is the referral thing. Yeah. And this is what happened. This is the yeah. story. This, yeah. you know, so it didn't, it didn't go far. They were far. able to get <clears throat> to the bottom of it. But for me, it was almost like, my mm. goodness, I've given mm. my life mm. to this community mm. for three years. Mm. And this is, people can't even be honest enough about their own mistakes. Mm. They want to like dump mm. this mm. on me. Like me, like mm. everything mm. I've done. I said, no, I'm, I'm done. That was like really um, one straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. But as I've said, things add up. Mm. Because at that time, I'd, I'd realized that it was pointless really to be mm. a doctor mm. in mm -hmm. a broken system. Mm. Because um, there were many things which had happened where I felt like you just postponed the mm. inevitable. Mm. These people are going to die anyway. Mm. We treated, we had so many outbreaks of malaria. You mm. treat very, very, very sick mm. children. Mm. You get them like from the brink of death and they recover. Mm. Then six months later, you meet the mother. Oh, how's the baby? Ah, oh, the baby died. What happened? Oh, you know, that time, you know, you explained to me malaria, how to do. But then that time when they got sick, I didn't have money. So I went to this, they gave an injection and the baby died. So I felt like, my goodness, you save lives. It's cyclical. It's like cyclical. It's like pointless. Mm. You're, postpone, you're postponing something which mm. was like almost inevitable. Once you, somebody, you treated someone and they recovered. Give them three months, give them six months, give them a year, they will be dead. So the HIV was there, the malaria was there because it was a very difficult um, community. Um, there were things which were in the community, like psyche and the community um, behavior that mm. were, you know, very, they are trusting private hospitals. Mm. They, are tr they are trusting people who are not qualified to provide care. Mm. Their beliefs in all sorts of things. So mm. as I said, when somebody came with severe and, and malaria, you'd sit down and explain, okay, this is how malaria, this mm. is what happens, this mm. is why this, so next time this happens, you should do this and this and mm. that. Mm. You know, people would get like um, a prescription, I would sit down and explain, these are the side effects. Then the person comes and say, yeah, yeah, you know, I should have listened to you, explained all this, but then I still did something wrong, and the baby died. So you feel like, wow, the HIV pay cases was yeah, something else, like you're postponing, the, the inevitable. The, <clears throat> what you've touched on there is very, is very, um, is very interesting. A lot of, because now it goes, you're showing the doctor side of, of, of things that mm -hmm. at times um, the conversation always, patients feel, especially when there's loss of a life, mm -hmm. Um, the the patient's family feels ah 
the doctor did not they or did, the yeah. healthcare system <laughs> did not yeah uh, <clears throat> there is this side that you've told which is also very interesting which leaves a lot of doctors this is what, when you said when when a doctor or the system says we did everything we could mm. what does that what is that is are those words what what is contained in those words i mean i think if I, a doctor in kenya or a doctor in uganda many times they have constraints mm -hmm. so everything they could perhaps is they made the right diagnosis they did the right investigations they knew the right treatment but then there are sometimes there are those things as i've said if you're going to do surgery and there's no electricity and you have to first start up a generator they did everything they could it's just that there was no fuel in the generator and that's not the doctor's thing or as you as i've said somebody went and um, they've spent six months being treated by quacks and they come when somebody really is like on their deathbed so if somebody has been sick for six months i don't know with tb and now they are in respiratory failure like it means the dark the, the, the lungs are damaged so what, what can i do maybe i can i can do something like for the first one hour but if i don't manage i did everything i could mm. so there are many other things which constrain constrain doctors mm. really and health, other healthcare workers mm. and it is very difficult to operate in a system that is not enabling you know when i was saying like doctors here going on strike mm. Uh, about things which I encountered those many years ago when I was practicing, I was like, wow, nothing has changed. Mm. Mm. Because you hear doctors here in Kenya, somebody saying sometimes they have to give their own blood for a patient to survive. It shouldn't be like a doctor, you have to donate your patient for them to survive. There should be blood when patients need it. And that person might die even after you've done that. And, and still the relatives will find something that could have, should have. So I, I, I feel for healthcare workers, I think it takes a certain kind of uh, spirit to mm. operate mm. in our environment. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. And so with, by the time now you're exiting, mm. you've seen, experienced, yeah. been castigated. Um, yeah. <laughs> what, is, what are the rumblings in your heart, in your spirit at the time? <laughs> 